Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I've got my feline friends here today. This is Shackleton, who I think you've met, and uh, I've also got Mop and Sally in the room. So mostly, Mop's probably the one who uh, he wants to get out of the room, but he'll have to wait a few minutes. So in today's video, I'm going to talk all about the Arctic sea ice. The sea ice minimum, uh, which happens in mid to late September, which it did this year, um, it then starts to grow after the minimum. And um, it's not really doing that well this year. It's not, it doesn't look like it's thickening that much. It doesn't look like it's spreading out in area and extent. Um, and um, I guess the question is, you know, why? Um, the physical nature of the Arctic has completely changed. The ice is much thinner than it used to be, and therefore it gets broken up and fractured by wave action. And uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's like slush uh, up there. And so I'm going to talk all about um, what's happening there, how the, the Beaufort Gyre is actually basically um, reversed, or at least uh, stopped significantly. And this has huge implications in the Arctic. The salinity is changing. The temperatures are changing. Sorry, the cats are distracting me a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go into the details of that. And also, there's some very, there's, a, there's this feature, these hot spots off Svalbard, which, let me just adjust the uh, camera here a bit. Ah, oh, cat. Okay, here we go. Okay, so what we have here is, this is the, uh, if you go to Earth Null School and you set it to oceans, currents, oceans here, currents here, animate, sea surface temperature anomaly. What we're looking at here is, this is Svalbard, Greenland's over here. And what we have is these uh, two hotspots. So the temperature of this guy, the sea surface temperature anomaly from the norm, almost up to about 15 degrees almost here. And the second one here is about almost nine degrees. So if I go to sea surface temperature, then what you see is that this is actually a temperature, this is 18 degrees. You know, right now, towards the end of October, 70, almost 78 degrees north latitude off Svalbard, the ocean water is 18, up to 18 and a half degrees or so. Okay, and over here, it's about, it's almost 12 degrees. Okay, and you can see the uh, currents here coming up on the surface, feeding this area. So what is causing this? And this is basically being an almost permanent feature since 2015. If you go um, in Earth Null School, what you can do is you can click up here. What you can do is, um, this is now, okay, I'm gonna go back a day. Okay, you can cycle through time, back a day, forward a day, back three hours, forward three hours. But what if you wanna go back longer in time, you click on the URL, and if I change 2018 to 2017 and hit enter, okay, so this is uh, basically a year ago. You can see these features are still here. I can go back to 2016. If I just type in, change the seven from 2017 to 2016, then it looks almost identical. And if you go back to 2015, okay, now you can see these features are much weaker, but they're still there. And now if I change the month from the 10th month to the first month, January, okay, so the features, you can see some fingers of warm water coming up here, but there's not much in the way of these features. Now, if I cycle through the months, if I go to the 
10th. Like I say, there's, if I go to 2014, it just says no data. So this is October 20th, 2015. You can see these features here. And now if I go to 2016, okay, so there's not much there, not much structure there. If I go back to 2016, okay, there you can see these features are a bit more well-defined, okay? And uh, let's go back to the present. And uh, Well, we can look at, let's go back to the present now. Okay, and you can see how they're there. They're stronger. And let's go back to, so let's go back a day again. So the, the date, the uh, timestamp appears, it's a date. And let's go to January 20th, 2018. Okay, so you can see these anomalies there, strong anomalies there. We'll go back to sea, separate, sea surface temperature anomaly. So you can see that the anomaly, you know, it's 10, 11 degrees almost here, here, it's 13 and a half. You can try to find the maximum. Okay, so this is in January of 2018 and I can go to uh, 03 for March 2018. Still there. Go into the uh, Go June, beginning of summer of this year. They're there. And go back to September, uh, say October rather. Okay, so there you can see these features here. And the water's warming up underneath or lower down. And then go to October. And here we are at the present. Okay, so these hot spots off Svalbard, what's causing them? Well, basically the water is coming up and, you know, that's, so you can see this area is all warmer. So this would be warmer. So let's say that this area was the same temperature as the background area, you know, something like this. What is giving it the additional heat? Well, obviously they're fixed in location. So it has to do, it must have to do probably with the topography of, of uh, the Svalbard region. Okay, so we know that there's the Atlantic water underneath the surface is, can be warmer than the water at the surface because it's uh, high salinity, which get, makes it more dense. And of course, warm water is lighter, floats on the surface. Cold water sinks down below. If there's a lot of salt in the water, that makes it heavier and it sinks down below. And if there's less salt, if the water's fresher, it rises to the surface. So there's a trade-off between the salinity and the, um, and the temperature in terms of the density of the water or the buoyancy. So what normally happens is we have the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, the AMOC. So you get these currents that come up. And normally when they hit the sea ice, in the, if it's in the winter, the cold, salty water hits the fringe of the sea ice and some of that water freezes and the freezing process rejects about half of the salt. So the water next to the ice that does not freeze becomes much, much saltier. Then it sinks, to the, it sinks down to the ocean floor and that completes the loop of the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. In the summer, when there's still sea ice, that Atlantic water, warm salty water, goes up and hits the edge of the sea ice, and the sea ice cools it down. And it melts some of the sea ice. So the cooling of that water makes it denser and the fresh water that melts from the ice dilutes the salt content, so it reduces the salinity of that water. So the water is getting colder and it's getting fresher. So this is, these are competing processes in terms of the density. Making the water colder makes it more dense. 
making the water fresher makes it less dense. So if the temperature part wins, and the net effect is that it's more dense, and it can still sink down and complete the AMOC cycle, this is in the summer. If the salinity um, effect on the density dominates, and that water won't sink down. Now, what happens when there's no sea ice? The sea ice is rapidly vanishing. So this um, mechanism to make the water sink down and complete the, the AMOC, the ocean circulation pattern, which starts with, um, in the Atlantic with the Gulf Stream coming up, coming across the Atlantic and uh, coming up in parts of that water even going into the into the Arctic and in the Pacific Basin it's the Kuroshio current that comes up to the um, to to uh, basically you know the, the North Pacific okay um, for that part of the cycle okay so we're getting um, massive changes with the ocean circulation, obviously, because the sea ice is rapidly declining. So what about the, the so some of the water that's down below um, has, now this is, so these, these guys are almost like, so, so think of the, um, the AMOC cycle, think of these things as chimneys or, or funnels, um, where the water spirals down into the depths to complete the AMOC. So these features are almost the opposite of, of the AMOC. So, I t so the heat, instead of just being the background here, there's water that's obviously coming up from below and that's providing the heat at the surface. So, so that water is rising up. Um, so why is it rising up? Well, partly the currents in this region have changed and the bathymetry, as you come here, you get into shallower water. So the water is given this vertical upward component and it breaks the surface. Um, it's, it's, some people have said that these are um, volcanic or geothermal related, but I just, I just don't see that. They wouldn't be at the same sort of uniformity um, since, you know, since 2015. It would have to be a long going process, you know, for all of 2016, 2017, and, and uh, 2018 up to, up to uh, almost November. Okay, so pretty sure it's it's uh, you know changing currents, and also the um, you know right here we have a negative temperature anomaly, and you get this sharp division here as the currents are coming down. Okay, so let's look at the um, let's look at the bathymetry. Well, first of all, um, let's look at a bit at Svalbard. Okay, my computer's a bit slow. So the Svalbard Islands, it's, an Ar it's sort of like, uh, they're remote islands in the Arctic Ocean. They're part of Norway. Um, okay, this is a map here. So we've got Spitsbergen is the main island. Um, there's an Arctic climate in all of these islands. Okay, these are some, this is some of the uh, buildings here in Spitsberg. Um, okay, um, a couple things. Um, here we go, tourism. So here's the island, Spitsbergen, the largest by far. Nordaus Landet, um, about uh, almost a third the size. And this guy's, you know, another third again, and then so on. So there's many of these islands, Spitsbergen, Spitsbergen being the uh, largest. Okay, get back to the map here. Okay, now the bathymetry is here, but you can't see it very good. Uh, this is just a map again here. Um, this is the, if I went to, I went to Google Images and I looked for ocean bathymetry of Svalbard and there's some very good diagrams. So this is the best one that I came up with. Okay, so here's the water depth in meters. So the red are up to about 25 meter water depth. The orange is down, is to 50 meters. And then we get into the light orange and the yellows and the greens. So this is a couple hundred meters here. So this is the bathymetry here. So as the water is coming up, the deep water, it is forced from the um, deeper ocean, a couple thousand meters at least here, the blues. Then the water, you know, hits the land, the 